In this video, we're going to be wrapping up our one-player Python text dungeon adventure. I'm going to start by taking a look at the state we left the game in, and then we're just going to dive straight into the code we have left to finish up. So far, our game is pretty simple. We can come in here and give our character a name. It will go values for our attack and defense and give us a starting amount of health, but there's nothing else that we can do. Well, I guess if we scroll down the code, there's one thing we can do, seen here, which is exit and exit the game. The next step, we need to add a room, something that we can move around in, and then something we can interact with. Our room object's are actually going to be pretty simple. So up here in the class, so let's find a good place for that class, class room I like the pun there completely unintentional it's going to inherit from object and it's init is really just going to define some blank values and we're actually going to go and define them in other functions like our dungeon and home function our room object is really just going to have some default values. So self.name is just going to be room name. Self.description is going to just equal pry as you guessed room desk because I feel lazy at this point. And then we're going to have a self dot exits and this is just going to be a dictionary for now and I'm just going to leave that empty. I just noticed our uh, old room class down there. I'm going to nuke that quickly. I'm also going to be nuking this city class here and instead I'm going to write that as a home function down in the game class below. In the init for our game class, we can make self.room equal none as the default. Then, just like our character check where we named our character, we can come down here and add an if not room and make sure this is self.room. Then we'll go through our process of creating our home room. Here I'll just run the self.home function and then below that we can go and actually create that function. After we run our home function to set our room value, then we'll have to continue our loop so we can go through to the next iteration instead of going to a command prompt. I'll just create my home function right down here and def home, make sure I am spelling it right, and here we'll create our room object, and then set our default values for this home function. Then I'm just going to write something where I can manually set the name and the description and then I'll come back so you don't have to watch me figure out what I want to write here. Now that we have our room name and description we need to figure out how we want to handle the exits which is really the interactivity of this room. So homeroom dot exits equal and it's going to be a dictionary where we have south then we need to figure out what function we want to run when we leave our home room. Actually, I just realized something that's going to make this even easier instead of having this be a dictionary. I'm literally going to have exits be a list and I'll come up here and update this too. And we'll see why in just a moment. So where's our room? And set up our exits. Last thing we need to do in this home function to get it working for now is make self.room equal 
homeroom. The next thing we need to add is a printout in our game loop for what room you're in so you know where you are. We can do that right here after we ensure that there's a room by first printing a new line, make sure everything's cleared out, and I actually think I will print two new lines, make sure that is clear, print self.room.name make sure I have two new lines again then I'm going to print the description I'm going to add one more of these prints for clarity and then we can run this and test it really quickly let's give it a quick test what is our name Bob and it gives us our description it says we have our humble hut and we have one exit to the south our exit currently doesn't really do that much but we'll add that in the next step since our game is going to be really simple every single exit is going to go into another room in the dungeon so right here in the game loop we can literally just have it look for any exits and if there's an exit proceed to the next level of the dungeon then we need to worry about our dungeon object right here under our exit command we can do a quick elif and then just check if cmd.lower is in our self.room.exits then we can just proceed to the next level of the dungeon for now let's just stub in a value and it'll be self dot dungeon and we need to save that into self dot room equals next since it's going to be a generator now we actually have to create the generator that creates self dot dungeon if you're not familiar with generators think of them basically like functions except for there's going to be one key difference and that's going to be it creates an object that you can ask it what the next version of it is it'll make a little more sense once we create it first up here in our game object let's create our self dot dungeon and this we're just going to make it equal to a dungeon function make sure it is dungeon not fungin even though I have to admit fungin does sound pretty fun up here we can make sure this is just dungeon make sure this is a function and we can just work from here to create our dungeon our dungeons going to create a room object so room and then let's set some values that we can change I don't want to have to manually write them for every single room but we want to have a few different variables that over time can change to make each room in the dungeon feel a little bit unique so room dot name and room dot description are both going to have some variables so let's think for a second what those are I'll correct my spelling right here one thing I do like about replit just a quick shout out is it does give some spelling and syntax checking on the fly which is really nice as it showed I misspelled dungeon for this example I'm going to keep it pretty simple so the name is just going to be dark cave and then the description we're going to have it kind of act as a mad lib to do that we're just going to be adding a format method to our string when we add our description so here we can just write this part 
make sure I'm typing right. Of the cave, or yeah, this part of the cave is, and we can use our curly braces, put a zero here for the first part, and give it a second one, then put a period. Let's see if we need any other variables here. Just like our previous room, I want to go through and actually add some information about the exits. So here, I can just add exits, and since I don't know what the exits are going to be yet, I'll just add another one of these format tags here. This first variable, I want it to be essentially how much space there is. So I can use the random package and do rand int and just have it do 0 through 3. And let's save this as a variable open this role. I know, not the most creative name here. Here we can add a quick conditional and just have if open this role is zero, do one thing. I'm just going to copy paste this, make this a little easier. Elif, if it is one, do something else. Copy pasta to, and then just do an else for this last one. Now I can go through and for each of these, just set an openness value. And I don't know if that has two ends or not, but it doesn't really matter. And I can just copy paste this. And then I'm going to fill this out with a uh, you know, magic cooking show moment so you don't have to watch the entire thing. Now that we have some strings to vary up our openness role, we can add that right here by using our format method. And then our first one is going to be that openness variable. The next part is going to be really simple and very similar, so I'm just going to essentially copy paste this and rename it for the other variable. So here we're going to do, instead of an openness role, we're going to do a wetness role. And then same thing, paste that through here. And then I'm going to update our descriptions, make sure I have that still set up. make sure I'm using my wetness here and same thing I'm going to do magic cooking show moment so you don't have to watch me write a description for wetness for now I'm going to make the exit really simple and similarly here just make room dot exit dot append and let's figure out which one, north, south, east, and west, we want to do by doing a randint. Zero through three, I guess, because we still have four options. And I guess we can just really copy this again. And same type of thing, I'll copy all the way up. exit role and yeah we should have variables for multiple exits things like that this is totally where you would add that but in our case this is going to be pretty simple and then here room.exit.append and for each one of these we're just pasting this and giving it a value. So north, west, south, and east. So this will ensure we at least have 
one exit in our list. And our exit roll, we will use that right here. And same type of thing here for our format. We need this list but we need a single item here. So we can do something pretty cool. We can just use a string. I'm gonna use the string comma dot join, and then we can give it a list. So here we can give it room dot exit. It's not really going to make too much of a difference right now, but if we had multiple exits, this would essentially future proof it and make sure that we always have the exits in there. Right now we only have one exit, but this should be good for now. The next thing we need to do is really what differentiates this from a function. So for a generator, we need to use the yield uh, operator. And what yield does is kind of like return, except for it holds it and lets you loop for the next object so then we can put this all in a loop and return our room and keep getting the next room in our dungeon so as i just said let's come up here and let's put this in a loop so wow true and mind you this is simple example you'd probably want some logic to actually break this up but in our case, we're just going to select all of this. Why will it not let me select it? And tab that in. So now, while true, we'll create a room. It'll name it, give it what we need, give it an exit, and then it will yield that room. Then on the next one, it'll go through the same process and give us the next room, which is exactly what we're needing here. So this won't actually give us a room. This will just create the generator. Then any place we want to use this, and I'll just copy this here, we can run either next from this, and there is a next method, or we can run next on it. So down here where we're using it, we're running next on self.dungeon, which will give us the next room, assign that room over, and then continue our loop. So at this point, we should be able to test it. So let's hit run again and give a name to our character. We're at our humble hut. There's only one exit. So let's try, same thing. Try running a different function. Oh, not recognized. That's great. We know exit works. So let's try south. And we already got an error. So let's take a look at this and debug it seems to be saying our room has no attribute exit which it is totally right so let's take a look at that and that's at line 107 so let's go up to line 107 and right here we have exit this needs to be exits so let's correct that on all of these and run and test this again so what is our name and let's try to go south. So we totally ran into another issue. So let's take a look at it. This looks like it's a continuation of that same error we were running into because it's not room.exit, it's room.exits. So we can totally see on line 115. I totally need to add that other S. Run one more test and let's see if it passes through cleanly this time keep getting south on every single roll, which is kind of interesting. And we're getting another error, so let's take a look at it again. It seems to be not liking my join thing at the moment, so let's try this quickly and just do room.exits, and there should be at least one in there that we can print out. I'll run this again. My name is Bob, I always get south, so I'm kind of curious if random is always on the same seed here. And I'm still getting an error, so let's take a look at this. Oh, I see where. 0, 1, 3. So, my last thing, and actually, let's 
go back on this so we can see it. That should work as long as this variable is correct. So run this. South has no exit. I already fixed that problem, but I undid past it. So let's try this again. So now we're totally getting into the cave and you can see dark cave. This part of the cave is not too difficult to squeeze through, though it's hard to see much ahead of you and damp as you see the water seep through the walls of the caves. Not the best writing, but you can kind of see that over time we can kind of type through here. I am always getting, okay, so it's not always, but I am getting a lot of salves on here. Um, so I wouldn't say that it's a broken random. There it goes. I'm getting a few random ones. So maybe I was just in a little bit of a funk on that random there. But you can kind of see it's going to create a few different things. But now that we can walk around, we're kind of lost in the labyrinth here. We need to set some demons or other things we can interact with. One other quick thing I want to do is separate out in our game function where we get the description. So the name, the description, and all of this. And I want this to actually be in a function called look. I can add that look function down here pretty easily. Def look. It takes self since it's part of a class. And then right here, we're just going to essentially copy what's there. Make sure this is all tabbed right. And this is pretty much what we're going to see with look. Let's make sure we're not taking all of the print. So let's remove one of those there. So one of them is at the end of each of these loops. And here we can do self dot look same thing let's run this make sure it's still working good to sandy check and test your code so this is totally working the next thing we can do is down here where we're getting our command same thing strip and we have exit and we're looking for the exits of the room Another thing we can do down here is add another elif and then cmd.lower, same thing we were doing before, equals look. And if it equals look, then we can do self.look. And then this will give us another command in case they're doing a bunch of things, then want to double check, make sure they know where they are. And same thing, let's go here, Sandy check this. My name is Bob, let's go south, east, this is cool. Now let's look. And we totally get that description again. So that's pretty cool. Same thing, we can look and see, make sure that's working, great. It actually looks like we're essentially getting a double print there. So what I might end up doing if it's a look is we can have it come through. It's going to come back and print it anyway. So let's just have it continue test and see how that feels here. So give our character a name, head south, and let's take a look. So now we take a look and we're seeing the single description of the room that we're expecting. So I think that's a little more in line with what the player would expect. Next we're going to have to spawn our demon, which is going to be in two parts. One in our room object, we're going to have to come in here and actually make a place for our demon to go, and I'll just make a list here. The second thing we need to do is when we're actually creating our rooms, we're going to actually roll and see if there is a demon in this room or how many demons. Just like before, I'm going to take one of these rand int functions and down here, let's make sure we can do it after the description. 
let's think about how we want this. So chance that there's no monsters, a couple chances that there's one monster, and one with two. So having four options totally works for now. So let's have this be our demon roll, which sounds like it would be a great form of sushi. Then, just like before, we're going to do something if it is a certain value. So here, if demon roll is zero, do one thing. I'm just going to copy that for two of these. Turn them to elifs, so they only have to check one of them at a time. And essentially the difference, uh, I'll explain this a little better, between if and elif, if they're just if statements, it has to check every single one of them. But since we're checking the same variable, if it's one value, it can't be the next value. So we can do an elif chain, so it just stops checking the ifs if one of them happens. So in this case, if demon roll is zero, it's not even going to check to see if it's one or two because they're all part of the same chain of starting with an if and then elifs. And then you can have a catch all at the end, which I'm going to do for our three option. And this will catch any other value. For this first option here, I'm actually just going to pass because I'm going to have nothing added if it's just one or zero. If it's one, let's add a daemon. So room dot daemon, and I think it is daemon, probably should be daemons because we're doing plural here. So I'll fix that quickly. Room dot daemons dot append, and let's create a daemon object. Same thing if it's two. Let's create a daemon object. And for three, let's just do this twice. So there are two demons in there. The first thing we should probably do is make our daemon show up in our look command. That way you can actually see it. We can do that right here after our description. I'm just going to add another print with a new line character. Then I can print what demons we have in the room. And here it's going to be a string. I'm going to use a format tag just like I did before. So make format tag zero, add our format method. But here I'm going to do something a little tricky. Since I don't know how many demons they're going to be, I'm going to be doing a list comprehension that I'm going to join with a comma space. So it'll always come out as one string to be able to put it in there, even though there might be multiple demons, two or however many more in the future. With this string, I can do a dot join method and then give it my list. So here I want to be able to take every demon in the room and get the name of it. So in, since it's going to be in a list comprehension, we'll try to keep it very short. So in for name. So in for in, in, and let's do this room. What's our current? So it'd be self dot room dot demons. So essentially, we're getting name for each one. And here, let's actually make this a little clearer. So this is demon for demon in our list of demons 
And here we're going to do daemon dot name and make sure we're getting its name value. So this looks a little complex. Let me stretch this out so it's a little easier to see. This is in one big line, but I'm doing a list comprehension of get me all the demons names and then join them with a comma and a space and then plug that into our demon string. The last part of that that I want to put in is actually only print this if there is anything in this daemon list at all. So that I can do right here and just have an if statement. And if that list is empty, nothing is going to happen here. Because ifs only work on lists with at least something in them. I'm going to fix my window size quickly here so we can see what we're doing. Let's run this. Name is Bob. Let's go south. Let's see if we can find a demon. Sweet, we found a demon. He's just a normal demon. And we can't really do anything yet with him. But we can see that there are different demons. And there's chances of these different demons of different strengths within the cave. So we at least have one interaction, which is they show up. The next thing we need to add is a way to attack in some combat mechanics. The next thing we have to do is add a combat function to our game loop. So let's check up here, run, and self.combat. Let's come down here and let's figure out what our combat function does. For our combat cycle, I want it to take everything from self.room.demons and I guess for daemon in self.room.demons if daemon.aggression is I'll just say greater than 4 is I know that's one of the big cutoff points um, actually, I'll do an elif there. I know 10 is the highest, so if it is equal to 10, if it is greater than 4, and then else we're just going to pass, which in this case really don't even need to be there. So essentially, if the aggression is 10, we want that demon to fight. I also have to give another quick shout out to the syntax highlighting as it miss or I missed an in there and it totally caught that for me. As for this command here I'm just going to stub in a value do demon dot fight and same thing down here we want to make sure it's going to fight and let's make sure that fights at least half the time. So same thing. We can do our rand int and do zero through one. So the easiest way to do that is here we can do a zero and one. So we'll have a random int either zero or one and we'll just call that our coin flip for the moment it's kind of a temporary variable and if coin flip because if it's zero it's not going to count on an if for an integer then we want the demon to fight so essentially this cuts the chance that we're going to fight in half and let's see what our random oh random dot random because we imported it another thing i kind of want to tweak right here is if the demon starts fighting and its aggression wasn't 10 already let's make its aggression 10. so then essentially if it starts fighting it's going to continue fighting it's not just going to stop randomly 
we should probably now define what this fight function does. So let's go up to our daemon class and let's just define a new function. Let's see, make sure I'm in the right class. Def fight. Since our fight method is on a top level class, meaning it's right here in the module, let's actually make it so we pass in the player as we call this fight method. And then down here, let's figure out how we want our dice rolls to work. I'm going to start by making this fight mechanic pretty simple. So I'm going to roll a dice and that dice is going to be based off of the creature's attack, so self dot attack. And this will give us a value of what our attack is. Then we're going to have a defense part of this, so same type of thing. Player dot defense. And I'm going to put that into a dice. And it's going to be kind of like risk. We're rolling to see what these different attacks and defenses are. So attack. Defense. And let's see how much damage they do. My syntax highlighter catching something else. I can't just use at in def because def is protected in Python so let's actually spell these out a bit then we have to set up a chain of if statements for what the different conditions can be if defense is greater than attack we're going to have one solution happen essentially doesn't have any effect. Let's have it if attack is greater. Let's just make these simple for now and then figure out some and let's actually have it so if they're equal something else happens. So essentially it'll check first if defense is greater, then it'll check if they're equal, then it'll check if attack is greater. We could just use an else here because we're really hitting all the different scenarios. If our attack hits, we want to make sure that the player gets damaged. So player health, so player dot health minus equals and let's make it the entire attack so it'll do that much damage to them if it's equal let's make it so it does half the amount of damage so minus equals attack divided by two there's both integer and floating point division since we're doing everything in integers, this will only come back with an integer value. So if you're getting weird rounding or something you're not expecting, that's probably the case. If you have a float, like you have something that's 1.3, then you're going to get some decimal values, which will change how your game plays compared to mine. So just something I wanted to point out there. The next thing we need to do in here is set up some print statements. Same thing as I've done on most of these. I'm going to make sure that there's a new line print on each of these. Then I want to have one that kind of gives a bit of a description of what's happening so this is essentially the gameplay part so you'll see essentially the attack being dodged entirely it being blocked but taking some damage and then one where 
you know, it's actually taking the full brunt of the damage. And let me actually make sure attacks already figured out. Okay, so I will fill out my descriptions. So taking a look at what I've done, I essentially duplicated the empty print line. So I'm going to create a new line at the beginning and end of each one of these attacks to make sure there's clear space and you can see movement and follow along with what's happening. But I also wanted to point out that I did a format so I have the demon's name in there. So it'll be different depending on what type of demon and depending on how strong the attack is, the description will change. But now that the demon can attack you, we need to put something in the game loop where you're fighting the demon. Before we forget, let's make sure we're actually calling with that player variable in there in the game. Since I remember we updated that. So combat fight, we are totally not. So self dot, and I think it's player. What did we store that variable as? Self dot character. And let's pass that to both of these variables here. Same thing we did before. I'm going to make sure we have our function stubbed in. So we're going to have a fight the other direction and pass in our demon. If it's already attacking us, we want to attack it. Same thing if it attacks us here, we want to attack it. And then it will essentially keep that balanced. It'll attack us, then we hit it. It's a hit for hit. But we're still going to need one more function so we can attack first. In our game loop, I'll come back up here and look at our commands. Let's add another one here. Before look, LF CMD dot lower equals equals kill demon. Uh, I'm going to just add kind of a chain of these to link them together. But then we can come in and actually have it use that same fight command. So now I have a big chain of ors as an alias so I can do kill demon, attack demon, depending on how the player is typing that. Though I'm not going to go through a completely exhaustive list. Uh, there are tools like Avenia where you can kind of take advantage of that, but we're just going to keep it fairly simple in this example. And right here at the end of this big chain, I'm going to have self.character.fight and pass in our demon. And actually, since we're outside of that loop, we have to do one more thing. We have to choose which demon. So here, we're just going to do the self dot room dot demons and choose the first one out of the list and also just like before now we actually have to define what that function does so let's go up to our character quickly way up here at the top and define a fight function which takes self and the demon we want to fight. To make this simple, I'm gonna start with the fight function from the demon class. Let me grab this here. Where am I? Way up here. Move that line. Now we can start swapping these. So same thing. Our player is our self, so we have our own attack. So the big thing we need to change is right down here. We need to take our player demon, our demon from here and then take its defense value. 
then I need to go through and update what these are going to be. But I'm also going to have one extra if statement. So here I'm going to have if not self dot weapon and then that should be good because if we have a weapon we want to have something slightly different so I'll customize this stuff and be right back so here I've updated not only what the print statement is but I'm also making sure to update it's the demons health that is getting attacked when I attack so I updated the player to demon and then basically just updated the description side from that. We also need to make sure here at the very beginning that our demon's aggression gets amped up to 10. That way if you are the one who starts attacking it knows to continue fighting until the demon is dead. But talking about dead we need to write something in our game loop that checks and actually verifies if the character died or if one of the demons dies so down here at the very end of this we should also do a self dot cleanup and this is going to be a simple function for now Let's scroll down here and create it. Def cleanup takes in self, and let's go from here. So we need to check our self dot character. Self dot character dot health and if self dot character dot health is less than one so essentially zero or less you can get negative numbers so I don't want to just check if it is zero then we want self dot character to equal none which will just trigger in our game loop that you need a new character that your character died. But at this point, we should actually print something that really just tells the character, you know, you died in a sense. So I'll do this in a few lines. And same thing, I will uh, magic easy bake oven this so you don't have to watch me figure out what I wanna type here. So I made a couple changes. The first thing I want to point out is I changed the character to none after I do the print. That way I can still get his name. And I just added a print. Sorry, character name. It appears you have died. Your soul is now Sharon's to carry forth, if he sees fit. Then we print game over. At the end of that, we set character to none. So the next time in the while loop, character will be none, and it will tell the game to start a new game. The next thing we need to do is, for the rooms we're in, check and see if any of the demons died. So, for demon in self.room.demon, let's loop through and see if demon.health is less than one. And same thing, I'm going to put a print section here. So take a look at what I've done. I uh, fixed my demon up here to demons because my room has demons. If demon.health is less than one, print, you know, if not self.character.weapon. Essentially just a flavor text of you getting rid of the demon. Here I'm going to use a dot format method, which I ta totally thought I already did. And here it'll be demon dot name. So we'll essentially get its name in there. And I'll actually add a dot lower as well to make sure that is all lowercase. Though the next thing we need to do is if we do kill the demon, 
we need to remove it. So let's come up here and actually add a new demons list. So new demons, let's actually call it living demons. And same thing here. We can do an else and then living demons dot append demon. So essentially, if we kill it, we get a flavor text. We can have logic in here during our cleanup. I'll actually add a comment up here. Demon death. Up here, I'll add one. Character death. And this will kind of give me an idea of what's happening. But when I get to the end here, you see, we still have a list of demons. So we need to be able to take our living demons. And at the end, assign it back to our room list of demons. So we'll keep our objects and we'll put them into a new list. And then we just assign that entire list back to our demons list. So any of the ones that die in the process essentially don't make it to the new list. They don't continue on to the next game loop. So a quick review of our demon death thing here. We're going through here. I am checking to see if I have a weapon or not. This is something I'm going to come in here and, you know, probably have another option for with our different weapons. But right now, I'm just kind of leaving one of those because we don't have any weapons intact. But before we can test it, there's one last thing we have to do, and that's actually add that weapon into our character class. It's one of those things we never really added it in. I just kind of stubbed it in. So want to put it in there before we can test. And let's just make it after our attack defense. Self dot weapon equals none. At this point, we should be able to come in here and test our code, give our character a name and go somewhere. So we can see there's a demon here. It isn't attacking me, so let's try to attack it first. Whoop. That command was not recognized, so let's attack the demon. And we attack the demon. Let's see, I punch its head. Totally works. And it looks like I have to attack this demon every time. So we might want to add something where essentially it continues this game loop instead of waiting for the input every single time. But this does give us a little different view where we can have the game where you have to attack the demon each time or run to another location. Let's play this game through quickly. Attack demon and whoop. I totally died, or nope, I didn't die. It dies with a flurry of embers. Okay, so I need to figure out what happens when the demon dies. So we can check out this bug. It says the bug is on line 283, so let's take a look at what that looks like. We have a lot of lines in our code so far. So it's in game.run. That doesn't help us that much. So the next line, 221, which is inside of that. Right here. Okay. So essentially that happened because the demon died and then I tried to attack the demon. And if there isn't a demon, you can't really attack a demon. So right here, where I have my check, I can just do if self.room.demons, because if there aren't any, you know, then it will just pass over that. And then I can do my else, 
and then just print but there aren't any demons or something along those lines so let me get my nested print lines there to make it a little clearer to read and then make some funny warning about you know it's like but alas there are no demons or something like that I think that'll be good essentially you try to kill one doesn't exist okay that looks like a good thing now we should be ready to test this again so to test this again let's just hit run give our character a name run into the first demon we can find Oh, here's a demon. Let's attack our demon. I probably should set a way to figure out how much demon it ha or how much health it has left, but this totally worked. Now we can see the demon ended up dying. We should add something at the end of combat or something where it looks automatically, though it doesn't seem to need to. It seems to get one hit each direction, so we have to keep attacking. I do want its aggression to lead it to attacking, so there is one bug there we kind of need to fix. But it seemed to work. We got to our last demon in the room attack demon but alas there are no demons there are two no demons so I will fix that so next time we run it but alas there are no demons let's keep running east two lesser demons attack demon kill demon and I'm going to probably keep doing this until I run out of health. This is the uh, not as fun part of the game testing. Oh, I guess when I look, it also attacks. So if I look at around the room, it's going to attack each opportunity it gets. That's kind of a fun game mechanic. So if you forget which direction the exit is, you have to look again. Gives it another chance to attack. I kind of like that. Oh, that's interesting. So I don't even have to look. As long as it's anything that isn't recognized, it kind of progresses it forward. So I kind of am going to take that as a feature and keep using that for testing. Especially because right now I am trying to essentially run out of health. Because the only way for me to really know if I'm finding any other bugs... But we finally got our next bug to look at so let's take a look the second part here was totally me still uh, being click happy and doing another L so let's look at this part up here and it says in main 261 which I think is down here in our game loop self dot character dot weapon so apparently none type has no attribute weapon womp womp so essentially we got to a point here where during our cleanup function it was trying to see if there was anything it could do here in the character and because the character died and we already set it to none here we're essentially checking and cleaning up stuff here we ran into an edge case where the character died 
and the demon died at the same time. So we essentially killed the character and then the demon also died. So we can just right here, since we're just setting variables, we're not really returning anything. If the character dies, let's just have it return right there. So essentially we don't run into this case where we can ask about information for the character after they've died. So that's a pretty good way that we can handle that. Let's kind of look through here and see if there are any other cases of times where we're asking about the character where the character might already be gone. So here we're checking in the combat we haven't done the cleanup yet, so the character can't be dead. We're doing our fight there. And that's just formatting. Okay, so this is looking pretty good so far. So we should be ready to do our next test. To make this next test a little shorter, I'm just going to give myself a little less health. And let's run this again. So let's leave. Kill a demon. And I totally misspelled that, though it should already try to attack me. Oop. I died so we're getting another error let's take a look at what's going on here as I said the joys of debugging since we didn't do a lot of testing and playthrough while we were writing the code we kind of have to do the brunt of it now and take a look at this stack what essentially happened is we can see where we check our command so let's go to where that happens in the game and we're checking for our command, we're getting it in input, but here in our input, we're trying to get values, and we've already done cleanup. So essentially, we don't even have a character right now. So what happens here, we need to do something different and print this out in a way that we would do this and get our cleanup value afterwards. So let's take a look at this and see what we can do i think the easiest solution we can have right here just because there really shouldn't be any commands or anything issued once the character dies we can just check in this loop if not character so if not self dot character let's just continue so essentially it'll come up to this point and if it doesn't find a character it'll continue through the next loop which will punt us back and will start us over again so that should fix our problem let's run this again so we can test it mind you we still have our uh, abbreviated health up here at the top so we'd want to change that before uh, releasing our wonderful game so the demon's attacking me. Is he going to kill me? Game over. And what is your name, warrior? Sweet. So we finally got back around to that. So now we game over. We can choose our new name. Um, totally. Uh, whoa, something happened quickly. <laughs> so here's a fun one and it didn't really cause any error the code was robust enough to handle the situation but we created a new character and this should happen again let's see if i can actually name uh, my character bob this time and look around and there's a demon here so he's fighting and he kills me I'm supposed to start back at home each time I die. So let's take a look at our code for when I die. 
and then kind of work from there and actually reset that. This should be a pretty easy fix. As I said, this isn't game breaking per se. It just is a functionality breaking bug. So let's come back down here to where our character dies. If not character, we want to continue. We also want to set self.room to equal none. So now let's rerun this. My name is Bob. I'm running south north fight this demon game over and I am back at my hut okay so I reset things which put me back at my hut and made this a little easier um, let me check and make sure there isn't a better way I should have done this I don't think I actually store my room anywhere I store dungeon um, the room you're in exit character so I can actually store my home object and then come back to the home but having it as a function will be fine I'll be able to keep that isolated and do that in there if I'm wanting before I forget I'm going to come back up here and change my health back since that was one of the things we were testing one of the next to last features I'm going to add to this game is a bit of a reward. So let's go up and add something to our character class. So this is going to be very simple. And it's just going to be self.gold equals zero. Essentially give us a very base inventory for now. Then we can come back in where we spawn demons we can actually create a random number of gold they can be carrying. So same thing where we roll to get their health value or attack value. We can do the same thing and actually might just use rand int here and self dot gold equals randint actually let's use our dice and let's just roll one through six cast that as an int minus one And that should totally work in that case. But let's double check that with a quick test as we're, you know, now testing as we're adding features. So it can have zero, up to five gold. The last thing we need to do before we test this is a way to see how much gold we have. So down here where we have our input, wherever I hid that, where where is my game loop gone uh here it is so commands and i can add it right here and there's our input we can just add one more of these fields space gold and let's just give that a value So now we have our gold value. So this should work. Let's stop this and run. So let's kill a demon. Takes a little longer to kill a demon than I remember. Come on, demon. Did he kill me? He totally killed me.
So I totally killed them, and it looks like we didn't have any errors, which is great. The next thing we have to add is some way to get the gold. So I'm just going to make it in the cleanup function, so demon death, before we remove the demon. So in this case, we're not really removing it from a list. We're not like clearing something to none. We're just not appending it to the new list. So here, before we really get rid of this demon, let's just take demon.gold and where are we? We're in self. So we would do self.character dot gold plus equals demon gold so essentially when a demon dies the character just gets their gold so this should just work out of the box so let's do another round of testing as I said getting a little better at our uh, testing this time around and let's see if I can kill something and get some gold he died and apparently I got no gold which is one of the options so let's see if I uh, get anything this time and sweet so I totally got gold that time so now I am keeping a gold score and we can actually set it up so we can do something with that gold next next thing I want to do is give you a place to Put your hard-earned gold so let's add a place in the home to do it though as we're generating the home we're not really storing this anywhere so let's just make a value that's top level and have self dot and I mean it could be gold or all sorts of things but let's just give it a new name here self dot safe equals zero the next thing we need to do is give a command where we can put money in our safe. And in my assumption, that safe is only going to be accessible within a specific room, the hut. Well, you start in the hut, so it would be a good safe place to store things in case your character dies and your next character needs some of that money. But I don't want you to be able to just run that command anywhere in the cave. It has to specifically be the hut. So let's go up to our room and let's add one more variable to this base class here and do self.cmds or self.commands equals a dictionary. This commands variable will essentially give us a key value pair. The key is going to be what functions are special to that room, what extra commands the player can run. And the value is actually going to be the function we want to run. Now let's go back to our function where we create our home. So we're looking, there's our home. Now we can create a new function here. So we're creating our room. This is looking good. And let's add our commands here. Homeroom.cmds equals add our dictionary. And we want to add two things. We want deposit. And let's add, I'll do that in one line withdraw withdraw yeah deposit withdraw the action same thing we need to now put in two functions so here we can do a self dot deposit we'll have to finish that up in just a second deposit cool make sure I spelled that right and self dot withdraw. I'm not going to be using the parentheses in here even though they're functions because I want to pass the function. I want to call it later though. Now we should be able to just set two of our functions right here. Same thing. Def deposit. Put it 
pass for right now and def withdraw now we need to figure out what logic we want here so a deposit we want to take self dot character dot gold and we want to take that and put it in our safe so self dot safe plus equals our gold then we want to set our gold to zero because we have just moved it into our account now with withdraw we want to do the opposite so essentially we want to take our safe so self dot safe and put it into our character dot gold so self dot character ter dot gold plus equals self dot safe and then we want to set our safe to zero we could set it so you could withdraw specific amounts and you know that's actually a good idea i'll add that feature but let's get this going first here so same thing we now want self dot safe to equal zero and this will be the default if you just run that function to make things easier i'm probably going to have to do an addendum video to really add some functionality to make it easier to withdraw and deposit specific amounts but for right now let's come in here and actually hook up our commands function because that's really where this next step needs to go so as we're running in here to our commands and we're seeing what all of our commands are we want to also be able to check and we can do it right here before look doing if cmd dot lower and this is why I'm thinking it might be easier because I'll have to do more logic to actually break it up not just do a lower here but I can do right now the way it's set up and just check and see if it is in self dot room dot cmds and what this will do is essentially do an if statement and just see is this a key to this dictionary it's not going to give me what the value is it's just going to give me a binary yes or no is this in here and the cool part about this now we can take that and get our cmds back and run this as a key in it And now we'll actually get a value back. So essentially we're just asking, hey, is this in here? And if it is in here, now get us this value. But what I want to do is now that we have this value, I want to run that function. So I'm going to try just with parentheses right there. And that should be able to handle this. And essentially, if it exists, we're going to pull it out and try to run the value. So let's test this quickly. And now that we're in our hut, we have golden things. I guess we have one more situation we kind of need to resolve. Because right now, I can do all of this stuff in my hut, or at least I hope I can. I can try to deposit and I get a search I have no verification that that happened whatsoever so let's go in here and actually print something so we know something happened that should have been you know a good place to start but hey it's always fun to start learning here so put these here same thing Put those there make a quick print statement you deposited to your safe now we can do our dot format and here we want to figure out what our gold was 
we've already transferred it and zeroed out our gold so the easiest way to do that is actually just check what safe is even though that's a little counterintuitive and same thing here you pulled blank out of your safe you pulled blank gold out of your safe and here same thing do our dot format and since we already zeroed out our safe we want to check our self dot character dot gold now we should be able to see if we're depositing and withdrawing things the other thing I'm going to do to make this testing a little easier is I'm just gonna set my default gold to 10 so let's test this again Oop, let's not name myself look I've already done that once while testing so I have 10 gold let's deposit I'll have to add something into the description that tells you to do that and I deposited 10 gold into my safe and I have zero gold now so hopefully I didn't just send my gold into the ether so now let's withdraw my gold and yay I have gold again so we know that works next step we need to have another way where we can return to our safe and store our gold instead of dying because we lose our gold when we die actually before I forget I'm going to jump into my home description and let's update that to really reflect the commands for deposit and withdraw so it makes it clear what you're supposed to do so I added as a quick description in here at any point in your hut you can withdraw or deposit gold into your safe to make that a little clearer now let's make a way so you can get back to your hut let's go into our dungeon creator and same thing like I did there add part to a description in one seventh of the room since seven seems like a good lucky number and every one of those rooms that gets that lucky seven roll will have this crystal that you can touch and teleport back home so let's take a look at our dungeon object and kinda go from here remembering this is not an object it's actually a generator I'll look down here and figure out what I want that role to be. Each room is generated per role, so let's get our command set up. Here we want to be able to create our dictionary and let's use, trying to think what the best command is for this. Let's see if is touch crystal. I'll think of some good commands that we can use to really run on this because all my aliases are going to have to be in this one spot. So now you can kind of see I filled out a bunch of different commands that all kind of point to the same function. Mind you, it's a function that doesn't exist yet, but that's where we're going now. I just wanted to show you that all the aliases are here. So while a player might not know the exact command to get there, they could use hopefully something that seems logical and still have it work so now let's go and add something but here you notice I'm running into an interesting issue so dungeon is a top level function so self dot warp home isn't going to work because well there is no self so I'll have to give it its own function here and what I can do is check and see every time dungeon is used and make it pass in what that self is but then I probably don't want it to be self so let's change these from self to game let's see if that works and let's just pass the game in and if that doesn't work I'll show you how to debug that sometimes those system type errors are some of the more fun ones to debug 
So here we can do game equals none to begin with. And the only time we're going to need game is when we're trying to warp home. So let me double check this quickly. Because yield only needs this the once. I think we can just pass in the game the one time, which would make this even easier to work with. And since I'm doing this kind of live, you get to see it. So it'll be fun. So I can pass in self there. And that should give me a chance that every so often in our dungeon, the game will create it. Actually, right now that'll make it so every room does it. So let's actually try that because for testing purposes, that actually works kind of well. So self didn't work because there was no attribute warp home. Well, we kind of need to fix that. We kind of fixed our roundabout way of not having the game object, but we should actually write the function as well. So let's come down here and add another function. Same type of thing. Def warp home. And this will be fairly easy because our game loop already does something where if there's no room so we can do self dot room equals none and let's see if I can find anything else we really need to do here because we're passing in the game that is during a point where you can interact and do something with it. You should be able to, yeah, just warp home and then you probably need to do a self dot look, but I'm not sure. So let's try it. Bob, Sal, cool. There's already a demon here, but we shouldn't need to worry about it since this should work in any room and touch crystal and lo and behold we're back in our hut so that totally works we have our warp crystal now we need to actually set it up so it's a real warp crystal it's an object not just a function that you can do any point throughout the game so let's come back up to where we're defining that where is our dungeon function and down here where we're defining our commands, we want to take in a role. So we want to actually do this up here in the description. So here's our openness and things. Here's our description. And down here, we really want to add something that is once every seven rooms we add a piece to the description, hey, there's a crystal here you can touch. I'm gonna do this just like we were doing with our other roles. We'll take this random.randant, and right before the description, and I'm going to add a comment here. I should add comments throughout this entire thing, which I should do before I post the code, but we'll get that one step at a time. So let's add it right here. crystal roll, get our random. As I said, I want to be one out of seven. So essentially do zero through six. Let's save this as crystal roll. And since it's an int, there's a one out of seven chance it's going to be zero. So, even though this is a little confusing, as I said, I should comment a bit more of this. If not, crystal roll. Then, we should add something to the description. So, let's take a look at what we can do. We have a part where it says exits, room description. Actually, 
I'm going to do this kind of a sneaky way here. So I'm going to do it after I have the description and just check here. So if not crystal roll, I'll add a comment here. The logic is really reversed. Think if crystal. That way, very clear, people can kind of tell what I'm wanting to do. And actually, I'll make this even clearer. I'm going to put that inside this if statement. Oop. For some reason, copy paste doesn't always seem to work the way I would expect. Come on, get back in there. There it goes. So think if crystal, and then here, let's just add something. So it's going to give us our exits. So room dot description. And just like we were doing with our math operators, if you do plus equals on a string, it'll just concatenate. It'll just add to the end of it. So this works perfectly in our case because we can do this, add our new lines, and since it's a pre-prepared statement, it makes it pretty easy. So now you can see we're just adding to the description right here. If not crystal roll with our comment that that really should be read. If crystal, then we add this to the description after the exit. So then you can see the commands. And let's just take those. And let's put them right here. So now same thing. Come back here, make sure that it's actually reading correctly, and now we have, whoop, two minute tabs in. There we should be good. And now we can see even though our syntax highlighting is having some issue with the colors there, let's try to fix that quickly. There you can see now if not crystal roll read if crystal also set the commands to touch the crystal and go back home we should be able to test our white crystal really quickly give our character a name and let's keep going till we can find a character or a crystal and in our very first room there's a crystal so let's try touch crystal and we're already in our hut. So let's deposit. And we have no more gold. Let's go south. And let's just keep going south. Oh, he's going to fight me. Let's uh, take this battle to the bitter end. And I'm dead again. So, Bob. I still have some gold and hey I already found an exploit not really a bug in any way but since I start with 10 gold which I should start with uh, nothing uh, I can just keep depositing it and now if I do withdraw now I have 20 gold so I'll have to fix my uh, testing value I put in earlier but we know that works so let's go south and there shouldn't be a crystal here Let's try to touch crystal and nothing happened. Let me double check. Yeah, command not recognize. It looped and he attacked me. So we can totally see that it is working now. It only works in the rooms we're wanting. And now we have a crystal that we can go back home. And this would be used to essentially continue your story. So you don't have to die in the caves. You can go back home, heal, and start going again. Now that you can survive the caves, let's actually give you a reason to survive the caves. So let's go up to your character stat here. And let's give you a score. So self.score. Start that off at zero. And... Let's make it so every time you kill a demon, 
it goes up by one. So same type of thing. That's just a complexity warning. Down here in our cleanup function, we can just set it up that any time a demon dies, self.character also goes up. So self.character.score, sorry, I probably just said that wrong, plus equals one. So anytime you kill a demon, your score goes up one and you get their gold. Next thing we need to do is go to our home function and I want to add something in the description with another format tag where I can keep that score. So essentially you see something in your hut that keeps track of how many demons you've killed for you with this character. So I'll figure out my description and be right back. So now you can kind of see, even though it's a little hard with the formatting, I'll try to make this a little wider to make it clear, that our room description has a format tag in it for how many tally marks you've scratched onto the wall with this character, which will essentially be your score for the game. And I have that here in the format method, pass in the self.character.score and that will essentially be what you get a keep when you go back from the caves. Let's shrink this down and test it again as we're still trying to keep up with our iterative testing. Create our trusty Bob again. So now we can kind of see our exit. We can see zero marks scratched on the wall which is good. Let's go self, I guess self again. I am getting some extra huge spaces here. So I might double check some of my uh, tab creations. Let's see, room equals living demon. Yeah, I'll have to double check where those are, but we do have a demon here. Let's fight this demon. Hopefully I survive. Sweet, I did. So let, let's hopefully find a crystal. Oh, I'm going to fight him again and probably not survive. Did I survive? Sweet, I did. Um, Nope, probably won't survive that one. Nope. Let's see if we can uh, survive long enough to actually test the feature we need. Okay. Did I get him? Sweet, a crystal is here too, so... Let's touch that crystal, come back here, and now we have two marks scratched on the wall. Sweet, I will call that a successful test. So our score is working, our crystals are working, and we have a way to kind of continue our game and character. I actually think I might have spotted a bug I didn't notice before, so let's try looky around. And you notice we touched our white crystal got back here let's go back a bit humble hut humble hut we touched our crystal but there's a glowing white crystal here in the room rumor has it if you touch one of these crystals it'll fully heal you but it'll take over your mind and make you sleepwalk back home and our health did not recover so we got a bug that didn't have a python error but we still need to go in and check it Let's find our function for this. Not combat, not cleanup. So it's on game. So game dot warp home. Where or where's my warp home? There it is. So self dot room equals none. So that's the only thing I am doing. I really need to set the character's health back up to max. So here I can do this pretty easily. 
self dot character dot health equals self dot character dot max health and now I'm just taking one variable setting it to the other and I am good to go there's one extra feature I want to add to this game before I kind of go through comment it and seal it up for YouTube and I want to add something where you can go through and get a weapon since we already have that character dot weapon attribute on there so I'm going to come in and add something to my description then we can go through explain it and get to our commands so you can see I added a quick sentence here your trusty friend is sleeping on the couch like always he sells swords for only 20 gold wrong inflection but you kinda get where I'm going with that so now we'll come in here and you see you have your deposit you have your withdrawal and let's add a few more of these like just buy and we'll just call the function buy sword for now make it self dot buy sword and to make this easy on myself I'm just gonna copy paste so buy we'll get to that buy sword we'll get to that let's just put sword actually I think that'll be good so we have quite a few things that all run to a self dot buy sword and then down here we can make that function by sword and all we want to do here is essentially give the character a boost but the weird part to this is we're going to have to do something to the character so it recognizes it gets a boost. So essentially we want to do self.character.weapon equals whatever our new weapon is. So here we can just have it be sword, but now we actually need to define what sword is here. So we know that this is going to be a weapon object and let's make it take two things uh, name what type of damage it does and it's damage boost actually I'll make that an integer make it a plus actually let's give these decent values make it a plus five or something or seven seems to be a uh, five I know indecisive great way to be a you know tutorial host but now I have a weapon that's going to have a name the type of damage it does and essentially how much of a damage boost it gives you so now we can go up and create our weapon class I will just copy that entire thing right there for now and let's design our weapon let's see where's a good place to do this dice character demon here's a nice big gap so we want class weapon and let's just give it some defaults here eh. takes its name attack type str is strength but it's also string protected in python so let's give this its power since it's a weapon we know it's going to be an attack type here and same type of thing let's give it def init self and self dot 
name equals name self dot attack type equals attack type as you can see this is making a lot of sense but is also kind of more of the monotonous typing and self dot power equals power let's look for any time we have that self dot weapon used in our code so I'm going to come up here look at my character class and dot weapon control F weapon so our first one is right here in our fight and if not self dot weapon let's do an else here and now I'm going to kind of give my other version of that if it's a weapon but since that's going to be essentially copying this and pasting it you know not just essentially but actually is copying and pasting that I'm now I'm going to update these strings getting a quick error that it's telling me I need to go fix I totally noticed up here totally need to replace this so I will nuke that and actually have this inherit from object which is totally what I should have done and then gave it these attributes as init variables coming in so let me go back to uh, what I was doing make sure I can find where I was and you can kind of see I'm updating this so if not weapon it does the punch if weapon it goes through and does our attack uh, right now you know it dodges as you lunge forward with a powerful sweeping attack type of your with powerful sweeping slash of your sword so you can kind of see how that's working and I'm going to update the rest of these quickly. So here you can see I just essentially updated what these powers and what these attacks are. Same thing though, right now our weapon isn't really doing anything, it's just really changing what our value is here, but let's continue searching, make sure our self.weapon is used where we're expecting. This is only where we know there's a weapon, that's good. And then here, if not self dot character the dot weapon, here's another one. It's not going to change too much of the gameplay yet, but I need to add essentially a different text string here. So I'll add that quickly. So here, similarly, I added a little more elaborate description when it's the weapon type and add the slash and the name of the weapon in there. But really, right now, we're not affecting the strength of the weapon yet. Illustrating some of the power of Python, here, to add that strength to the character when they equip a weapon, is actually going to be pretty easy, because all the times we're really using it for calculation, we're really just looking at one thing, his attack strength. So up here, we can come up to where we're defining this character, and when we get our attack, you can see we're defining it here, but we can set another value. So it actually adds our weapons value to that attack score. To do this without breaking any of our previous code, we can do this with a property. So we can come down here and create an at property and we just want to create a function so def and we want our function to have the exact same name of the attribute that we want so attack in this case make sure we're getting self in there and this will get our attack value so we can essentially take our attack roll get the highest two value and this is what that could return so right now we can kinda see 
same thing, it's not really doing much different. However, we can now change this a bit so we can do in this character if self dot weapon and if there's a self dot weapon return attack roll highest value two plus self dot weapon dot and what did I name that strength attribute? I'm just going to sandy check this quickly. Power. It's always good to sandy check some of those things. But essentially, we'll add the power right back into it. Else, we just return that same thing we were. So return just that value. And now our attack value will just return a slightly different value when we have a weapon equipped. So this will affect us in our dice rolls and this will affect us in our UI stat over here. So let's double check, make sure undefined attack roll is right there. Ah, so it is not defined because I am not storing this. So let's just store it that simple self dot copy and paste those into there so now we're going to just store those attack rolls and then add them when we need to get our attack value we should be able to test this pretty quickly uh, just come up here to where we're defining our default stuff make sure we have enough gold to test this try to run our game so it's back it just took a second to load we're upping our gold so we can test this quickly and run again give a name to our character and let's buy a sword so we should buy a sword and we're watching our attack value right there go up and look at that it's now up at 11 so we have our sword it's already equipped uh, let's try this again by sword. Make sure I'm not just double stacking things. Sweet. So buying a sword helps you. Buying a thousand swords does not help you a thousand times. This is already pretty balanced. But now that we have our sword, let's uh, go find a demon. He's uh, hopefully taking some serious damage. And totally got him. Got some gold see if I can find a crystal nope uh, actually yeah there is so touch crystal and I am back home deposit golds in there gold safe I have my sword I think this is pretty good test uh, I'm gonna go through this quickly uh, we got our procedural dungeon we got our out of dungeon mode our home uh, we have our Python objects. We created a room object with uh, commands built in, descriptions, and other things. Our character with very basic skills and inventory. We have our dungeon, which has essentially a generator that just keeps creating room objects, but shows you some basic procedural generation uh, stuff also shows how to use kind of a game loop and the while wow loop we have our home we have a battle system and we have some basic commands so I think this actually completed all the things I was needing sweet uh, I think next thing to do is actually just go through and comment up the code to make it a little easier for whoever else needs to jump into here before I do that, let's uh, actually make sure our gold starts at zero, so it's a nice default value. Put some spaces in there, make it look pretty. And yeah, I will just start going through and adding comments. So finding another quick bug I want to fix, I noticed when I was adding comments, which I'll get to in just a second, that we're creating our weapon and we're assigning our weapon when we use our by sword. However, we have no error checks in here actually checking to see if the player can even buy the sword. So let's do self.character.gold. 
and we have to check if not self dot character dot gold is greater than 19 or actually we can use greater than or equal to 20 make that a little easier if not self dot character dot gold is greater than or equal to 20 then we need to come in here essentially give a you know oh I'm sorry warning type thing in return so I can essentially just return right there I'm going to have to add a print and then if it gets past this so essentially if they have more than that amount of gold we just need to come down here at the end give them their sword and take their money so here minus equals 20. So essentially, if not self.character.gold is greater than equal to 20, just return. Let's actually put a print in there. Put this with a couple spaces. print your friend says uh, I'm already in double quotes so I'll do this in single quotes and make this easier dude I know you don't have the cash for that at the moment and it just gives a little flavor text essentially if you don't have enough it just says hey you don't have that much gold and if you do have enough it doesn't say anything it just creates the weapon assigns the weapon and takes your gold up here I added some comments just explaining the dice object and some functionality including putting some comments in some spots where it looks a little weird or explaining the inheritance. Uh, some descriptions on some of the functions including some of the initialized variables or what ones kind of default. Uh, commented my property to kind of explain why I'm using that as kind of a special feature uh, and here a lot of this is pretty self-explanatory but I just wanted to kind of point out where adding you know doc strings where we need and comments kind of where we need to help with some of this if people feel like there needs to be more comments or whatever in the code feel free comment and I will totally go in update code I have no problem going in and doing that it's pretty quick for me to change that um, coming down here same thing kind of explaining what I'm doing with some of these objects and then putting some comments in here where you can kind of understand and hopefully follow along with the code I tried to make it as clear as I could and intuitive for somebody especially newer people to dive into this code However, there's always ways to improve it and make it more readable. So if there are things that are confusing, feel free to hit me up in the comments as well. And we can go over any code fixes, comment changes, or anything else that would be necessary. Thank you again for joining me as always. And I know this video was a little longer than most, but hopefully it was able to really cement some of the ideas and give you a lot of tools to play around with in Python. So if you feel like there's anything you got out of this or anything you can do to give back, we do have links down below for ways you can donate as well as links for the code so people can access the code, comment, like, do any of that fun social media stuff, and hopefully see you again soon with some more tutorials. Have some exciting stuff coming up. Elysium is the project we're going to be working on with Avenia. So yeah, all the fun E names. But get ready for that. We're going to be diving in. That one's going to be hitting the ground running where this one we were building a lot of the individual pieces. The next one a lot of the stuff is going to be built in but it's going to essentially create a text-based MUD 
with nothing in it. So we're going to really take a look at Avinia, tear it apart, and see what we can build with it. We have a few builders who are going to be helping out. Uh, shout out to Mars from the Change Machine Labs team, uh, Marshall Cole Keithis, and yeah, we'll be building stuff out and hopefully see you soon. Peace.